Hey everyone. In this video lesson, we're going to develop a formula to find the midpoint of a line segment and then start looking at properties of triangles in an analytic way. We're going to talk about the median of a triangle uh, and introduce that idea and then do more with it later. But yeah, but for uh, for to start off, uh, we're going to talk about midpoints. So <clears throat> um, the reason why uh, we do this unit is, you know, a lot of jobs require, um, you know, uh, programs that uh, use a Cartesian plane to like specify location. Um, so machinists have plans that are, you know, very, very, very uh, specific. And you want to know uh, angles between, you know, certain, uh, certain lines, distances between certain points, you know, you might need to, uh, a tool and die uh, um, uh, person might require to, you know, punch holes at certain points in a, uh, on some kind of part, maybe like halfway between two points. Um, my brother-in-law, Ryan's a millwright, and he plans out all his jobs uh, on a computer uh, in a program like this. Um, and, you know, if he, uh, he has the whole, the whole job laid out and if he wants you know if he knows that he wants to have like a hole drilled or something halfway between two points he can tell the computer to do that and it tells him exactly where to put it um, but of course it, we need somebody to write these programs and somebody has to understand these ideas and that's where the mathematicians come into play uh, so if you're wondering when when is this useful if you get into design work this would be very useful um, today we're going to talk about the midpoint of a line segment. So, uh, just a, loosely speaking, a way to think of midpoint, it's just simply like the halfway point or a point that is halfway between two other points. Halfway. between two other points. I think intuitively, like if I if I said, here's a point A and here's a point B, there's a line segment joining them. If I asked you guys to say, hey, roughly, where do you think the midpoint of that line segment would be? Halfway in between. So that's a visual of what the midpoint would be. Often we'll use the capital M. And sometimes we use this notation M with a little subscript like A, B to, to say, hey, that's the midpoint of the line segment from A to B. Now, just like you developed a formula for, um, uh, for slope, we want to build up to the point where we have a formula for midpoint. Um, but to, to kind of get there a little bit at a time, I have this example for us. So we have a line segment joining the points a negative two, negative three, and eight, five. So we're gonna determine the rise and run, and then use that to determine the midpoint. So um, what do I mean by that? So let's first do the rise, okay? So the rise, remember rise is a distance between the y values. And so maybe this can be my y2, this can be my y1, 5 subtract negative 3, which is 8, which we could have got by plotting the points and just counting the squares, right? So that's point A, that's point B. The run we get by doing x2 minus x1. So that's 8 subtract negative 2. And that's 10, uh, which we could have got as well just by counting squares. Now, how on earth can the the how how on earth can um, the midpoint be found using rise and run? Well, the rise divided by two is four. The run divided by two. is five. 
Now, can you guys from point A, can you go up four over five and then do it again and see what happens? Or you could follow along with me. So I go if I go up four over five and then up four over five, I actually get from A to B perfectly. Up four over five, up four over five. So by using the rise and run, by using those elements of the slope, I actually was able to find the midpoint, right? The midpoint would be the point. So the midpoint of AB would be the point three, one. And I found it by just chopping the, the slope in half. That's a neat trick on how you can find midpoint. You basically find the slope and cut the rise and run in half. And that guarantees that you find where the midpoint is. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's do, um, uh, let's do another example by um, um, finding the midpoint or um, by using a formula. So <clears throat> let's actually derive a formula and then I'll show you that it works. So um, to get the, if you think about um, uh, what we did there, and if we look at this graph, even the rough diagram I had earlier, I don't think it takes too much to visualize that the midpoint of a line segment is halfway, it's halfway between the points, but by that very definition, it's halfway uh, horizontally and it's halfway vertically. And if you want to find, um, like if you had two numbers and you wanted to find the number perfectly in between in the middle of two numbers, you'd find their average. So to get a midpoint between two guys, so say we had two points, I'll call it A, so I'll call that X1, Y1, and B, X2, Y2. If I want to get the midpoint of AB, uh, what I do is I average, to get the X value, I average the Xs, and get the Y value, I average the Ys. And how do you find the average of two numbers? You add them and divide by two. So you get the midpoint of a line segment. To get the x value, you add the x values and divide by two. And to get the y values, you add the y values. To get the y value of the midpoint, you add the y values and you divide by two. So it's like an intuitive formula that you can use all the time to find midpoint. Now, let's show that this works from our previous example. So point A in our previous example, was negative two, negative three. And our point B was eight, five. Let's find the midpoint of AB. So the formula says you average the X's. So the X, I'll even, I'll just fill those in. This isn't a necessary step, but as I've been saying, can be helpful for you to kind of settle into a problem. So negative two plus eight, divided by two, that's the average of the x's, and the average of the y's, negative three plus five divided by two. If you wanna do this in two steps, you can. Negative two plus eight is six over two. Negative three and five is two over two. And we get three one, which is what we got earlier by graphing it and just reasoning out using the rise and run. So moving forward, we're gonna be using the slope, the uh, midpoint formula. It's just a quick, efficient way to get the midpoint without having a graph. You just use the formula, plug in the points, it outputs the midpoint. So that's pretty handy. Um, just realize this slide, it says use slope to find midpoint. So let's just call it, this isn't on your notes, but I'll fix this later. We're just find midpoint. Try using the midpoint formula. Try it these two times. Find the midpoint of these two points, 1, negative 3, and 4, 3. And uh, now uh, A could be um, could probably be plotted on the graph you have previously. But the other two guys, maybe not. Their numbers are pretty big, right? So find the midpoint between A and B. Writing out the formula, not a bad idea not necessary. I didn't do it in my last example. 
but maybe I'll do it for this one just to make sure you know everyone's okay. But you don't have to write that out if you're comfortable. So we have one plus four over two and negative three plus three over two. Now, mo most of you should be able to do this in one step, but if you wanna do it in two steps, that's fine. You can add the top five over two and you get zero over two. So the X value is actually a decimal. You can write that as 2.5. I'm gonna leave it as five over two though. And zero over two is just zero. So that's the midpoint of that line segment. If we're finding the midpoint of a different line segment, we can use, we can say MCD to differentiate the two and just use different notation. So we're doing here, we're doing 12 plus 48 divided by two and 33 plus negative 15 divided by two. Now, I'm going to show another intermediate step again, but I think a lot of you guys could just go to the answer here. So 12 plus 48 is 60. 33 and negative 15 is 18. And so this midpoint is 39. So it's good we have a formula because that would have been very impractical to graph. Um, as I have uh, uh, have mentioned, uh, Desmos would be a great place to uh, check some of these answers. Uh, for example, in the one we, where's Desmos, we previously just did, um, we had, so it's one minus three and four, three. So let's actually plot these. Can I give this a label? A one, three, did that work? No. Oh, was it one, three? One minus three and four, three. So one minus three, I'll label that. I think I can label it, can I label it A? Oh, I can label it whatever I want, that's neat. And uh, the other one was four, three. Label that with the B. And we think the midpoint, we thought the midpoint was five over two arrow zero and yeah it plotted it for us we can use the label m for midpoint if you want or midpoint of a b there we go and uh, we can see that it looks like we did it right now i'll say to you guys this is something you could do if you're doing like a practice problem at home you literally punch in your points and your answer and do a visual check of what the midpoint is. So that's not cheating, that's just being smart. Be a great idea. Okay guys, so we've developed the midpoint formula and we've practiced using it several times. Um, this brings us to the idea of a median of a triangle. So maybe you remember the median from like statistics. It's like the median of a group of numbers is like the middle number. The median of a triangle is kind of related to middle. It, it, and I'll get it down first. We'll get some visuals and it'll hopefully sink in. So the median, median, a median of a triangle is a line joining a vertex. That just means a corner. And the midpoint, midpoint, of the opposite side. So I want to emphasize this is the definition for a median of a triangle. Because a triangle has three corners, it has three vertices, every triangle has three different medians. So let's draw them all below. So the median from vertex A goes from A to the midpoint of the opposite side. Call that MBC. And this is a rough sketch of the median of this triangle. It divides the triangle in half. I think I have a note on this. 
but the median literally divides it in half. The area of each of these other triangles is the same. So it perfectly cuts it in half. That's why it gets this kind of name, the median. The median from vertex B goes from B to the midpoint of AC. So something like that. And then finally, the, ver the median from vertex C goes from C to the midpoint of AB. And it goes something like that. So all three of these medians divide it in half perfectly, which is pretty cool. That's not really obvious from the drawings. I have a few notes on medians here. You can take that into your notes. So as I mentioned, hopefully it's clear, every triangle has three medians. As I've mentioned, each median divides a triangle in half and like literally half, each half has the same area. They might not be symmetric, but they do have the same area. That's pretty cool. And um, what's really awesome is that for every triangle, the medians will always meet at a specific point. And that point is called the centroid of a triangle. Now, we're going to talk about finding the centroid as, as maybe as a bit of an exercise later on. Um, but uh, I wanted to, uh, mid, just finding midpoint by itself isn't very much for a, a lesson. So I'd like to introduce medians um, and just get the conversation rolling about that. So as a, uh, to finish off this lesson and get some practice in, we have an example here. So um, I've given you guys a kind of a big grid here to draw this triangle. You should be able to fit it on. This triangle is formed by the points uh, 4, 4, 10, 6, and 6, 0. So that's points A, B, and C. And you can, uh, if you printed this off, maybe you should use like a, use a ruler. For me, I'm just going to draw it uh, by hand here. That's okay. It's fine. It's fine. We'll just call that good enough. So uh, we're going to find the equation of all three medians. Um, and let's start by finding the median from A. So we have to know, so the, the median from A I'm going to write this in, but it's implied. It goes to the midpoint of BC. So we have to find the midpoint of BC first. So the midpoint of BC. And again, we're kind of practice up with this, so I can feel like we can move a bit faster. Average the, X, average the Xs. 10 plus 6 divided by 2. Average the Ys. 6 plus 0 divided by 2. And again, we're using B and C here. We're finding the midpoint of B and C. And that's 16 over 2, that's 8. 6 over 2 is 3. And I can plot that. The point 8, 3 is, um, oh, you know what? I did 10, 6. I did 10, 6 too high. I was looking at my diagram, and it wasn't quite um, wasn't quite fitting, fitting nice. It's because I drew my second point too high. So let's redraw that. 10, 6 is here, B, B, and now 8, 3, midpoint of BC. That's perfect. So the median looks like that, guys. Uh, so let's find its equation, though. So um, to find the equation of a line, so we did this in our last lesson. So think about what we know, right? We have the line, this median, going from A to the midpoint of BC. Do we know its slope yet? No. Can we find it? Yeah, because we have those two points, right? So the let's find the slope between these two points. Mm -hmm. Let's find the slope between these two points. All right. So slope is the difference in the y's. So here we're using uh, our midpoint. And so we're using a, and we're using our midpoint, right? So let's subtract the y values. It doesn't matter which order you do the subtraction in. So we're going to do 4 minus 3. And we're going to do 4 minus 8. 
And that gives us 1 over negative 4, which is the same as negative 1 over 4. And that makes sense with our diagram, right? From A to the midpoint of BC, down 1, right 4. So you guys, I would encourage you guys, if you have a space to make a sketch, you can always be checking your diagram to make sure things make sense. I've helped out kids tutoring online that say, well, I don't want to make a sketch because my teacher says we have to be able to do it without a sketch. And yeah, you, we'd like to be able to do things algebraically, but that doesn't mean we can't have a sketch to visualize what's going on, right? So let's finish this off, guys. We know that the our slope of this median is negative 1 over 4. We don't know the y-intercept. Our strategy, plug in a point. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to plug in 4 or 4. So that looks easy to work with because a fourth of four is one. And so that's negative one plus B and B equals five, which makes the equation of our line of this median Y equals negative one over four X plus five. And guys, does this make sense? It does. If you work your way backwards or by going left, four up one, if you go left four up one, boom, you're on five, right? You got the y-intercept. So this is a good exercise, just tying lots of things together. And later on, it will be important for us to be able to um, uh, find the equation of a median. We're gonna do some things with that. Um, I have asked you guys to do two more. Find the median from B and find the median from C. And uh, I would encourage you to, as you find other midpoints, add them to your diagram. Um, so at this point, if you'd like to just do the problem yourself, you can. Uh, unpause and uh, or pause and unpause when you're ready. But if you want to follow along with me, you can as well. Um, so let's begin. So the median from B, by the very definition, goes to the midpoint of the other side which is the side AC. The midpoint of AC, let's find it. To average those X values. So for A and C, that's four and six. So four plus six divided by two. Average the Y values um, for A and C, four plus zero divided by two. And I'll just do it to the right here. 10 over 2 is 5, and 4 over 2 is 2. The midpoint is 5, 2. Does that make sense? If I plot the point 5, 2, it certainly looks reasonable to me. And I'm going to draw that median in. So we're finding the equation of this line right now, guys, from the midpoint of AC to B. We have each coordinate. Let's do it. Um, maybe just as a... For me, I'm just going to write, so just a reminder that B is 10, 6, and I have that median of 5, 2 right now. So what's the slope of this median? I'll do uh, 6 minus 2 for the difference in the Ys. Then I have to do 10 minus 5, which is I get 4 over 5. Again, I'm checking my answer here. Uh, so am I going up 4, right 5? Yes, I am. Perfect. So the equation of this median, y equals 4 over 5 times x. We don't know the y-intercept, little b. Again, I want to maybe just say it's finding the equation of the line is the same steps every time. Find the slope, and here it's, we have the two points. Uh, let's plug in a point. Which point seems reasonable to plug in? I'll plug in the smaller point. I'll plug in the midpoint here. So my there's my x and there's my y. We know that y is 2. When x is 5, and 4 fifths of 5 is just 4. This is great. So 2 equals 4 plus b, which means that b is equal to negative 2. And that means the equation of the median from b is y equals 4 over 5x minus 2. And we can check that on our graph. Um, interesting. That shows all that work there. That's really weird. That's really weird that it stays there. Anyway, 
four or five X uh, minus two. There, it's gone. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, um, if you go back or down four and left five, you can see we're going to get to minus two. So everything makes sense. That's good. And uh, oh, now my work is gone. It's really strange. Anyway, um, maybe I'll just rewrite the equation. Just so in case. Four over five X minus two. I oh, hope my program's not acting buggy. All right, let's get this finished. Let's do the median from C. Why is it over there? That is so strange. That is so strange. Using the pen, can I select the eraser? No. Select the eraser. Oh boy. Yeah, let's finish this off before <laughs> things all go crazy. So the median from C, oh boy. So C is the point six zero. Oh wait. I have no idea what's going on. So now I'm erasing this with the laser pointer or something. <laughs> Pen. Six zero is our point. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to discard all that stuff. I'm going to like to keep it, but yeah, we're just going to, we're doing what we got to do to survive here. So the median from C, so C is the point six zero. And the median from C goes to the midpoint of AB. So right away, you guys, you guys know, if you're finding the median from C, well, it has to, it's going to AB. So that your first step, you have to find the midpoint of AB. And so we average the X's. Uh, so for AB, that is um, 4 plus 10 divided by 2. And for the Y's, uh, for A and B, it's 4 plus 6 divided by 2. Excellent. And that gives us, so 14 over 2 is 7. And 10 over 2 is so I'm just going to, you guys can add that to your diagram. Everything should fit. Then I'm going to, when we're done, put all this into De De Desmos. It won't take me very long. We can kind of, you know, check all of our answers. So it should be cool. Um, all right. So that's the midpoint. What's the slope of this median from C to AB? Well, I'll do uh, 5 minus 0 over 7 minus 6. Subtract the Ys and the Xs. That's good. This gives me 5 over 1, which is just 5. That's nice and easy to work with. So the equation of this median is 5 times x. y equals 5 times x plus b. Um, and uh, I think I might plug in the, the, the uh, point c, because when y equals 0, x equals 6, that looks easy to work with. Sorry if my 6 and b's look similar. 5 times 6 is 30 plus b, and then we get b equals negative 30. So the equation of this median, y equals uh, 5x minus 30. All right, guys. So what I'd like to do quickly, this wraps up the lesson, but I want to actually show you guys Every single thing we did here, we can put into Desmos and just uh, you know make sure things check out. So um, yeah, let me go back to make sure I have my points down. So four, four, ten, six, and six zero. Four, whoops. Four, four, and we're gonna call that A. And 10, 6, and 6, 0. And we're going to call that B. And with 6, 0, call that C.
Right. And the last equation we found was 5x minus 30. So as you guys can see, that goes through C and it passes through the midpoint of AB. So everything checks out there, right? And then what did we get for the midpoint from, or the, uh, the median from A? I believe we got Y equals, it was uh, negative one over four, X, and the Y intercept was five plus five. That was our first line. And then you can see it, it goes through A and visualize a line from B to C. It definitely goes through that midpoint we had, which we calculated. And wrapping things up, our last one was from B. And I believe the slope of this one was 4 over 5. Two brackets, actually. 4 over 5x. And uh, we found the y to be minus 2. So you can see it goes through B. And visualize that we found the midpoint of AC to be uh, 5, 2. And it goes through that. And uh, yeah, everything seems to check out. And uh, what's really cool, remember I said the, me the medians always intersect at a point called the centroid. It looks like the centroid for this guy is about uh, six and two thirds and three and one third. Um, the significance of what the centroid is, maybe we'll talk about in a later lesson. Um, but yeah, I wanted to emphasize Desmos can be your friend for sure. All right, guys. So that was, uh, that was a cool lesson. Uh, in my opinion, I had fun doing it. Uh, sorry for the technical glitches at the end there, but I think we recovered well. Uh, in our next lesson, we're going to look at another equation. We mentioned before, we're going to find an equation for the length of a line segment to join the, the formulas for slope and midpoint. Until then, hope you guys are staying well. Have a great day, and we'll see you soon.